Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Saturday, September 11th, 2021, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time. And our thoughts and prayers go out to all the lives lost during the September 11th attacks. Now, the models are in and they're showing heavy snow coming to the northwest soon. And that's a boom. But the big story, two-day graphical tropical weather outlook showing two areas of, well, potential development. Keep calm. It's potentially developing to be boom time. And, well, that's a boom. Hello. Let's watch the forecast. Well, everyone's still talking about Ida, but we know there's another little area in the Gulf and we're not expecting it to come straight toward us, but we will probably get some rain from it. And this is what we've been talking about. The tropical wave, just an area of low pressure here in the Bay of Campeche, kind of the center, actually very close to the coast of Mexico, as I said, and that will be drifting to the north and spreading rain, especially over southeast Texas and southwest Louisiana. But where we are, too, we're going to be looking for some rain from it, although again, we're not in the direct path. High chance now of it developing by either tomorrow or maybe Monday. And here's another area. There's another wave way out near Africa. That one could develop in the next few days too. But let's just focus on this one right now with a good model consensus, just keeping it very much in the extreme western part of the Gulf of Mexico because we have this blocking high actually. Well, and we have that blocking dress as well. So what we're looking for, Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus to get the most moisture initially. But the big boom is going to be Louisiana as this storm moves through. So let's give them a big thumbs up for good reporting there at WWTLTV. And, well, we're already subscribed. Who knew? That's a boom. Now let's take a look at the Atlantic Tropical Cyclones and Disturbances. Here we have Invest Out on road number one. Disturbance number one here on NOAA's.gov chart here. And this tropical wave is going to be moving north towards Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. And before we get to the deeper forecast on what's happening here with the cyclone forming down there in the Gulf of Mexico, let's see about Hurricane Larry as it slams Newfoundland earlier today. They felt the wrath of Hurricane Larry that was hit, it hurt rather, earlier today. Crews right now hard at work trying to restore power to thousands who had it knocked out. St. John's among the towns and cities hit hard. So with more, let's go to Chris O'Neill Yates. She's in St. John's. So Chris, uh, good to see you. Uh, describe the damage that you are looking at today. Well, Michael, just as long as I don't blow away while I'm talking to you, the wind here has come up again. It came up really high last night and it had a, it had rain with it, but this was always supposed to be a wind and waves event. And so it, it's, it's quite windy here now, so we'll have to watch and see what the damage is. But throughout the day, since very early this morning when we set out, we saw lots of uh, downed trees just snapped in two like a, like a twig all over the city. Uh, traffic lights out power out to about 60,000 customers of Newfoundland Power. Right now at this point, about half of those are back. We've seen roofs that have blown off homes. We went and saw a couple of them and a school in the, in the city. Outside of the city, Marystown on the south coast on the Buren Peninsula has sustained quite a bit of damage. The water filtration system there has been knocked out and now they have to, to boil their water until further notice. And even though, you know, this looks deceptively good because we have the sun, the sun out, but this is really, really still quite windy. So authorities have been ordering people to stay at home unless they Oh my God, she's, uh, do you think she's fear-mongering a little bit? They kept showing the same picture of one building with the roof collapsed. Good job, Hurricane Larry knocked out power in Newfoundland. We're, we're going to get you the thumbs down you deserve because absolutely nothing happened there. It was just an, a heavy, windy day. Uh, but moving on, king tides are coming to parts of Florida. 
especially flood-prone South Florida. Now let's talk about what we're talking about. Parts of South Florida will experience higher than normal seasonal tides coming up soon, potentially causing coastal flooding periodically through December, according to officials in two counties. Monroe County, which includes Everglades National Park and the Florida Keys and neighboring Miami-Dade County, will both be affected by the king tides, a term used to describe exceptionally higher than normal tidal cycles that typically occur during a new moon or a full moon boom. When people are, well, they're not expecting it, especially when they're dressed like this D-bag. <laughs> Let's get to the GFS model of total accumulated precipitation in the U.S. And this is moving through September uh, 30th or so. So here we are through the 19th. And you can see that heavy rain from that tropical depression moving up into Louisiana, bringing uh, two to four inches of rain on the coast of Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. But most importantly, central southern Louisiana here could be picking up 12 well to 14 inches of rain at the end of the show here. We're going to be picking up a pocket of moisture in my region, which is great because we are bone dry and we need the moisture. So that's a boom for us. Uh, moving on to the next GFS model, the snow. Ho, ho, ho. Let's take a look. It's going to be moving up through BC and Alberta there in the next week or so. That's the 14th, 15th, 16th. 17th and 18th and then by the 19th and 20th it's going to be dropping down to idaho in montana 21st moving into wyoming 22nd heavy snow in wyoming through the 22nd and the 23rd there we got the 24th 5th 6th and 7th so snow is in the, the program and indian summer well it's going to be a bummer up in these regions hot temperatures from the southwest into the plains Storms from the plains to the Great Lakes, tropical moisture into the Gulf Coast. Hot temperatures will continue from the southwest to the Midwest. Isolated strong to severe storms may occur across portions of the high plains and Great Lakes region into the mid-Atlantic northeast. A surge of tropical moisture into the Gulf of Mexico is expected to bring heavy showers and thunderstorms to the western Gulf Coast on Sunday and into next week. So take heed as Super Typhoon Shantou, Shantou makes landfall in the Philippines before tracking towards Taiwan. And that's a, well, uh, it's not that bad. Super Typhoon Shantou made landfall in the far northern Philippines on Saturday, bringing destructive winds and heavy rain to the archipelago. Shantou, known as Kiko in the Philippines, was one of the strongest storms this year, with sustained winds at 160 miles per hour before the landfall, equivalent to a Cat 5. Whew, I'm sure there was loss of lives there. Now, seismic update, we've got some well, some, a slight uptick here. We've got a Solomon Islands boomer. And we also have a Russian 5.3. Double 5.3 is kicking off as we prepare and make the video. So that's a boom. Now let's get on to some Iceland updates on the Fagradusval mountain eruption on the 12th of September. This is updating a day before we did the video. So this is in the future. But the future forecast is that, well, <laughs> Iceland. Let's reopen that. Iceland is re-erupting. They thought it was the end of the volcano, but it is on a, on a longer-term eruptive cycle where it is puffing and passing every several days here. So 9th, 10th, 11th. So it's a two-day lull between eruptive activity. And you can see this is up, up, and away. More lava being seen, and it's back to eruption once again. Now, Astia, near vertical deformation. This volcano is a standard caldera volcano which erupts to vei5 and we've uh the alert level has been raised to yellow due to the inflation here in the east of the caldera and there is a seismic swarm happening now so the activity is ongoing more magma is being emplaced and astia is right here the alert level yellow volcano the current eruption at the Falls falls all over here be almost like going from New York over into Indiana. So, pretty far distance there. Now, Astia Volcano is a major calderic volcano, which has last erupted in 1961 on October 26 at VEI-2, which we're expecting a minimum of VEI-2 or higher based on the eruptive history, but it has potential for VEI-5 on two eruptions, including one back in 1875 during the Dalton minimum and here back 8910 BCE. So, Astia is the potential for VEI-5, which is where 
this gigantic caldera was formed during the last VEI-5 eruption. So there'll probably be another smaller hole blowout here during the VEI-2 or 3 eruption coming soon. Do in Iceland near you. And that's a boom. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have Popo, Reventador, Languila, and many others. Languila puffing to 7,000 feet today. Popo has an uptick and is now puffing above 20,000 feet. So we're going to keep a close eye on all the volcanic activity as we move on to more sciencey things. Physicists say that a fifth dimension could be on the horizon. Our understanding of the universe might need a reset. <laughs> you think? All of science needs a fucking reset. As shameful discrimination against vaccine refusers, the new American witch hunt. Yes, do you know what happened during the Dark Ages? The same thing that's happening now. Complete dystopian world. In the modern era where we have YouTube and TikTok and other shit that cover it. So follow the Twitter and watch the American witch hunt happen in real time. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Thank you all for coming out this morning to the live stream. We appreciated all of the questions and answers and just common welfare in the community. A big shout out to Willie Soon and the 14th International Convention on Climate Change coming up in Las Vegas in mid-October, where we will be covering it as media. And stay tuned for all that amazing coverage. Once again, thank you for all the people who became Patreons in the last few days. We love each and every one of you, the heroes that share this video. Without you, we are no one. And that's a boom to knowledge. Be safe, and we'll see you in the morning. Oh, yeah.